was four degrees, so that's heading in the right direction. We should all feel pretty good about that. Uh, a couple announcements this morning. Uh, first off, we have a, a guest pastor. Pastor Matt is doing a pulpit exchange with, this is Pastor David Can or Khan? Can uh, from Warren First United Methodist Church, so that would be super fun. Welcome. Uh, easy announcements, Relay for Life pepperoni rolls, if you order them, can be picked up in the Narthex afterwards. There's a few extra, so if you did, they're all sold? I lied, there are no extras. If, if you didn't order a pepperoni roll, sorry. They're delicious and you missed out. Order them next time. Uh, Kids Club slash Recharge is this Wednesday, the 17th. Dinner is at 5.30, it starts at 6, and it's over at 7, correct? 6.45, that's what I said, 6.45. Uh, Christian Ed Committee meeting January 28th after Sunday school. There's a Finance Committee meeting tomorrow at 7. Uh, and believe it or not, even though it's negative 100 degrees outside, it's time to start thinking about VBS. So there's a sign up if you're able to uh, spend some time that week or donate some time or however you want to think about it. Uh, there's a sign up in the Narthex. Please do that. Um, Janelle's? Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Janelle. You're welcome. Good morning. Just a couple quick announcements. First of all, on the welcome desk, if you have helped in um, the children's ministries in any way, whether it's helping in the classroom, cooking, cleaning up, recharge, VBS, or Sunday school, whatever, you, however you've helped, we have bought ornaments for you as a thank you gift from the children's ministry. There are still a few out on the uh, welcome desk. If you haven't picked one up, please do so. We are very, very grateful for all you do to make our children's ministry so amazing. So thank you to all of you for that. And as well, I also still have some of these um, snap bracelets. I don't know if it'll work because I didn't open it, but it snaps into a bracelet. This was the gift we gave the kids on Christmas Eve. We still have some of those as well. So if those kids would like to pick them up, if you would like to pick one up for your grandchild or your nephew or whatever, that is fine. You can take them home. We are, um, they will be on the welcome desk as well. So please feel free to do that. And one last thing about VBS. This year, we are creating our own. We are very, very excited to be doing this. We have so many talented people in the church. We're decided to take it on. However, we need to get started now. So the sign-ups out there are not, you, you're welcome to sign up for anything. We're actually right now looking for people that can help us brainstorm um, the, the set things, the music, all of those kinds of things. So if you can help us do that, if you are a teacher or even if you are not a teacher and you're just a creative person, um, we also need some people with some art skills, whether it's computer graphics or whether it's just art, um, as well as we're going to need some people to help us do some videoing. We're going to make our own, we're going to do our own music team, and we're going to videotape the music so the kids can learn it. Um, we're hoping this is an amazing VBS. If it is, we're going to share it with some congregations in the area if they'd like to use it. So please, please prayerfully consider if you can help us out with that because that would be awesome. Thank you. Uh, there was no school last Friday, so the Tiger Backpack Program uh, on Thursday, they made all of the lunches, but then they didn't get to deliver them because there was no school on Friday. So all of the lunches are made, so if you, if you are involved in that, you don't have to do anything on Thursday, but we still need people Friday morning here at 945 to bring the lunches that we made last week to school. Does that make sense? Great. All you have to know is if you do the Tiger Backpack thing, be here Friday morning, 9.45, and we'll, we'll give some lunches out. Did I forget anything? Anything else? Yes, ma'am. Anything else? Let's take time to greet one another.
Well, good morning, everyone. We invite you as you uh, return to your places uh, to join with us in singing our opening hymn, Here I Am to Worship. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we come here this morning to worship you. We come here to claim you as our God. We pray, God, that you would wake us up this morning and give us your vision and your dreams for our lives, for our church, and for our community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
for the children's sermon. <clears throat> Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Amen. Now, how many of you know who I am? Nobody? <laughs> you know who I am. I, my name is Pastor David, and I am the pastor of a church called First Church in Warren, downtown Warren. What's one of the first things you want to know about somebody if you want to get to know somebody new? What's the, one of the first things you want to know when you meet somebody new? What's their name? What's the, oh, I forgot to turn this on. All right, let's try that again. What's their name? Okay, something's wrong here. <laughs> there we go. All right, we want to know what their name is. What else do we want to know? How old are they? How old are they? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Anything else you want to know? Maybe what school they go to, if they don't go to your school? What their favorite subject is? What do they like to do? And if we want to get to know somebody a little bit more deeply, we want to know about their feelings. What are they feeling? So I'm going to ask you, what are you feeling this morning? Are you excited? Are you happy? Are you tired? Are you sleepy? What are you feeling this morning? Because sometimes you can't tell by the way people look. Excited. You're excited. All right. I'm happy. You're happy. Anybody else want to tell me how they feel? Tired. Tired. All right. <laughs> Stayed up too late last night. Well, sometimes it's hard to tell how people are feeling, and it's hard to get to know them. But the great thing is God knows us and knows who we are. God knows all about us. God knows those secrets that we keep deep down in our hearts that we're afraid to tell anybody. Maybe something we did or something that happened. God knows it all. And He loves you just the way you are. He loves you when you're tired, when you're excited, when you're happy, and He knows all about you. And that's the great thing about loving God back is because He knows us so well and He still loves us. Let's bow in prayer. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for these, your children. 
We pray, Lord, for their safety. We pray for their protection, Lord. We pray that as they go to school, they will strive to excel in everything they do. We pray, God, that we would lift them up and encourage them and nurture them and be good role models for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so. all the children leave. We offer our prayers to God with our joys and concerns. If, you've had, if you have anything you'd like to share this morning, please raise your hand and an usher will bring you a microphone. Anybody? Uh, good morning. I just wanted to thank everybody for their prayers for our son, Matt. He did make it home from his travels and ventures abroad and is now back at the uh, University of Akron to finish his very last semester of college. So thank you all. For those of you that don't know, Bob Gribbling is home. He'll be beginning his outpatient therapy tomorrow. His range of motion is almost back to normal. Thank you for your prayers and concerns. I'd like prayers for Rob and Stacy and little Parker. This week has been kind of rough. Parker's been in the hospital since Thursday with another breathing issue, and he's still there now. Um, we don't know if he'll come home today or not, but Rob's kind of hoping that Maybe somebody can help them with taking care of Parker if he, is, if he is home on Monday and Thursday and Friday of this week so he doesn't have to go to daycare. He, um, he shouldn't be uh, in that environment. So if anybody is, is, might be available, you can see me after. You can call Rob, and I can talk to you. Thank you. My life has been threatened if I do this prayer request, so please, please, please do not go visit. Mary Rayburn just got out of the hospital with double pneumonia and sepsis. We weren't allowed to tell anybody because she doesn't want anybody fussing over her. So you could send her a card, but please, and don't tell her that you heard it from me, but just pray for her. Let's hope she's not watching the live stream. Anything else? Yeah, the part of me, I'm dealing with a bad chest cold here, but I want to offer our prayers and condolences to Sarah Mosier. Uh, she just lost her husband this week. Carl was also like a second father to me. Um, Mrs. Mo, you got a great family here that loves you. You know how much I love you, and uh, we will definitely be there for you going forward. Amen. If there's nothing else, uh, let's join with Firmly Grounded singing All Creatures of God and King. Oh, 
Oh, wonderful and holy God, we do praise you. We do bow before you. We humble ourselves, Lord, before you. We lift our hearts to you. We lift our minds to you. We lift all that we are to you. We know that you're here. 
We know how precious you are. We know all the blessings that you bring. And Lord, we know how thankful that we need to be for all that you do for us. So Lord, wrap your arms around us and hug us and hold us in this hour, in this moment, as we pray and offer up our lives and, and as we pray and offer those on the sick list, as we pray and offer up our churches, as we pray and offer up the area around us, as we pray and offer up for this world, for this country. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that you're in our presence. That's your promise. If we'd gather, you'd come. And so we're gathered, Lord, and we know that you're here. We know that you hear. We know that you speak. I'd ask you to be with Brother David and his family, especially Brother David as he speaks today. Would you anoint his lips, his mouth, his heart? Would you be with each one? Pray for two churches this morning, both Highland and First Church. Pray for all churches, but at least these two churches who so much need a touch from you. Pray for everyone on their, on their prayer list, Lord. We ask you to anoint and touch. You heard the joys, concerns, and thankfulness from those who had the mics today, Lord. You know. Lord, how it burdens our heart to see, to see our children hurt. We don't want our children to hurt, Lord. We want them to be touched by you. We want them to be well, but we know sometimes our children hurt. But we also know that you can reach out and touch each and every one of them. So we pray for this sick child. But we also pray for all these children who gather around Pastor this morning. And thank you for them. I ask you to keep them safe as he's already prayed and put an anointing on them and raise them up because that's the generation to follow us. We pray for those who traveled, who are still traveling. We're thankful. We pray, Lord, because this has been a season of sickness. Just two days ago, it was 60. This morning, you wake up, and it's minus four. A lot of colds, a lot of coughing, a lot of flu. Lord, touch everybody and keep them safe and wash over them and bless them. Be with us for the rest of this winter. Especially on Sunday, give us some good weather so people will come. Lord, we ask you to be with those who have lost loved ones. If there isn't anybody in this room who doesn't understand what it means to hurt and grieve and, and get filled with pain, Lord, as we lose one we love so much, whether it be a husband or a wife or children or grandchildren, friends or neighbors. So I ask that anointing upon all those who may be hurting this morning for whatever reason. We pray for those who just can't be here, who couldn't get out or because they were maybe older or cars didn't start, whatever the case may be. We pray for those who may have turned on their internet today and called up the church service. Right now we ask you to touch them and fill them with your love and grace and goodness as they listen to all and have listened. We thank you for the music of the choir. We thank you for Firmly Grounded. We thank you, Lord, for our collective singing together, which is all part of worshiping and praising you. So, Lord, be with all those that are here. Be with all that has been said and done. Be with that yet to be said and done. Bless everyone. Touch the prayer list. Anoint, fill, bless. And, Lord, maybe there's some that couldn't get the right word out. Because of that, you taught us how to pray. And you said, pray like this. Our Father. Well, you know, we all started a new year, and you know, we have many plans and much to do in our heart that we want to do. It all costs money. We thank you for what you've been doing. We thank you what you're going to do as we look into the days ahead and we get things done and uh, become a beacon that will glorify Jesus. Let's have the ushers come forward, and we'll take up the tithes, gifts, and offerings.
Merciful God, you provide us with so many opportunities to follow Jesus' teachings and to live as modern-day disciples. We sometimes respond to your call with innumerable excuses or unfounded worries. We confuse our spiritual longing with the need for possessions. Yet, these things only provide a false sense of security. As we offer these financial resources, transform us so that we are stirred to hear your call on our lives. We pray in the name of the Redeeming One, Jesus Christ. Amen.
It's good to be with you this morning. Uh, when Sherry and I first came to the Warren area, we had an opportunity to visit this church a, a couple of times, and uh, it's good to be back here and worshiping with you. We have a couple of scriptures to, uh, at this point in time. The first one is Isaiah chapter 62, verse 1 through 5. Isaiah chapter 62, verse 1 through 5. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet till her vindication shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. The nations will see your vindication and all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. No longer will they call you deserted or your land desolate. But you will be called Hephzibah and your land Beulah, for the Lord will take delight in you and your land will be married. As a young man marries a young woman, so will your builder marry you. As a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so will your God rejoice over you. I just want to say a couple words before we get going. This is a marvelous passage, one of the many passages of Isaiah where he envisions, he has a dream of a community that is more fully under the reign of God. He doesn't use the term kingdom of God, but that's what he's talking about here. And he envisions it in such a way that he says they're going to have to call us by a new name. It's going to be that transforming. And of course, Isaiah was one of Jesus' uh, favorite books to quote from, and I think he saw a kindred spirit there of this longing for the kingdom of God. Our second scripture comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 through 11. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus, be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now, to each one... The manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To the one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. <coughs> <coughs> to another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another miraculous powers. To another prophecy. To another distinguishing between spirits to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of the one and the same Spirit, and He distributes them each to each one just as He determines. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Some people see things that are and ask why. Some people dream of things that never were and ask why not. Some people have to go to work and don't have time for all of that. <laughs> Sometimes it is hard to dream. The, the everyday uh, demands and stresses of life seem to overcome us and we, we seemingly don't have enough time to, to dream those dreams. But today I want to reflect a little bit on this idea of dreaming. There's a story told of a woman who uh, woke her husband up one morning and said, I just had a most wonderful dream. I dreamed that you gave me a pearl necklace for our anniversary. And this was the day of their anniversary. And, and she goes on and says, what do you think it means? And he says, you'll know tonight. And she gets all excited. And that evening he comes in, comes home with a small package all wrapped up and a gift for his wife, and she gets all excited, and she opens it up, delighted, and she opens it up, and she finds a book entitled, The Meaning of Dreams. <laughs> I 
Today we're going to think about and reflect on this idea of dreaming. And uh, as you know, tomorrow we will celebrate the uh, celebration of the birth of Dr. Martin Luther King. And this is an important celebration for the church because not only was he a great civil rights leader, but he was a great theologian and great preacher. And through his life, the very nature of the Christian faith in the United States was changed and transformed. And so we've been having this celebration now for over 30 years. And uh, he put forth his dream over 50 years ago. But the question for us today is... How much of that dream is still alive? How much has it been realized in our communities and in our church? King was, uh, had a dream and, and had a life that celebrated a prophetic vision, a, a uh, revitalization. And so we want to question, we want to ask ourselves, where is that dream today? And to help us to think about this, we're going to look at another leader who had dreams from the New Testament. And this is the person by the name of Peter. Peter uh, had a dream, a vision one day. And I just want to read you part of this story. This comes from Acts chapter 10, verse 9 through 23. And this is the story of Peter having this vision that caused him to have a new understanding of what it meant to be a follower of Christ. At noon on the following day, as their journey brought them close to the city... Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted to eat. While others were preparing the meal, he had a visionary experience. He saw heaven opened up and something like a large linen sheet being lowered to the earth by its four corners. Inside the sheet were all kinds of four-legged animals, reptiles, and wild birds. A voice told him, get up, Peter, kill and eat. Peter exclaimed, absolutely not, Lord. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke a second time. Never consider unclean what God has made pure. This happened three times. Then the object was suddenly pulled back into heaven. Peter was bewildered about the meaning of the vision. Just then the messengers sent by Cornelius discovered the whereabouts of Simon's house and arrived at the gate. Calling out, they inquired whether Simon, known as Peter, was a guest there. While Peter was brooding over the vision, the spirit interrupted him. Look, three people are looking for you. Go downstairs. Don't ask questions. Just go with them because I have sent them. So Peter went downstairs and told them, I am the one you are looking for. Why have you come? They replied, we have come on behalf of Cornelius, a centurion and righteous man, a God worshiper who is well respected by all Jewish people. A holy angel directed him to summon you to his house and to hear what you have to say. Peter invited them into the house as his guests. The next day he got up and went with them together with some of the believers from Joppa. And so our title for today is Wake Up and Dream. Wake Up and Dream. And those words uh, have a contradiction in them. They don't seem to quite fit because we think of dreaming when you're asleep. So how can you wake up and dream? But I want to argue today that we must be alert in our visions, in our dreams for our community. Uh, we must be alert so that those dreams can come true, so that our vision of what the kingdom of God is like can be embodied in our churches. And so we're going to first look at Peter. And uh, this is a story of how Peter came to a new understanding of this notion of the kingdom of God or what it meant to be a follower of God. And this dream he had was not about what to eat, but it was about how the followers of Christ could come together and fellowship together. And some of the followers were Jewish, some were Gentile, and according to the Jewish tradition, you were not allowed to eat with Gentiles because they did not keep the same dietary laws. They ate food items that were prohibited. And so there was this barrier to having fellowship between the Jewish followers of Jesus and the Gentile followers of Jesus. And so 
God has to kind of expand Peter's mind about what it meant to be a follower of Christ. And it's hard for us today to kind of get how radical this would have sounded to Peter, how astonishing, how amazing this would have sounded. Um, and so I tried to think of an example, and this is the one I came up with. Now, don't go... Uh, this, well, let me just give you the example. <laughs> The example that I came up with is if someone today were to come to us and say, if you want to be a follower of Jesus, it doesn't matter what religion you are, you don't have to convert and become a Christian to become a follower of Jesus. Now, I'm not saying that, so don't go tell Pastor Matt when he comes back that I'm saying these crazy things, but that would be shocking to us if somebody said that to us. We would say, That's, how can that be? And this is what Peter was facing. His whole mindset was uh, around this idea that if you wanted to be a follower of Jesus, naturally you would have to convert to Judaism and follow their rules and regulations to be a follower. And so God is showing Peter through this dream a new vision of what the kingdom of God is like. Martin Luther King also had a dream, and his dream uh, expanded and changed over time. He started out uh, with a movement just trying to desegregate the buses in Montgomery, Alabama, but through his leadership, that movement spread until he became concerned with voting rights and the rights of uh, poor workers and even protests against the war in Vietnam. And so his dream expanded until it was a dream for the whole restructuring of American society. And he had a name for this, this vision of American society. He called it the beloved community. And I would say that his term, beloved community, is really another term for what Jesus called the kingdom of God. It's a vision of a community, a new kind of community, under the reign of God. And Martin Luther King had this dream that America could embody this dream. And uh, the, uh, there was a preacher by the name of James For Forbes who described what was at the heart of King's dream this way. He said, the search for the beloved community through nonviolent action, centered in the moral imperative of love, deeply rooted in the American dream, reflective of the kingdom of God, transforming our society into an oasis of freedom, of justice, where social and economic and political power is shared with dignity for all, working together to create a beautiful symphony of brotherhood so that all God's children can say in truth, free at last. What a dream. This dream still inspires and motivates us today. And although progress has been made in that dream, this was uh, King's dream speech was 50 years ago or so, meant much progress has been made, but the challenge for us today is, what is that dream for us? How do we look at Peter's dream? How do we look at Martin Luther King's dream and embody it in our community here in Howland, here in Warren? What does it look like for us today? And the thing is, we must wake up and dream because there is, has always been a persistent and thorough resistance to this kind of dream, to this dream of the beloved community. In recent years, uh, the, the reason I read that scripture from Corinthians is not dealing so much with the gifts of the Spirit, but this one phrase in verse 7 where it says, now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. This is idea that in the community of God there is a common good, things that are good for everybody. And I'm afraid when I look at the news and, and look at what politicians say these days, it seems like we have lost this notion of a common good. And we have this feeling that if your side wins, my side loses. And what's good for this group is not good for another group. And, and we pit Democrats against Republicans and rich against poor and all these divisions because we do, we've lost a sense of a common good. But that's part of the vision of the kingdom of God. That's part of the vision of the beloved community. And that was part of the vision that Peter had, that there was a common good. 
that, that there were things that were beneficial to all people. Access to health care, opportunities for education, uh, availability of nutritious food, an environment that's free of pollution. All these things are good for everybody. And so we have to be aware that some people resist this kind of notion of common good. And that's why we must be alert. But we must also wake up and dream because the dream never stands still, but is continuing to develop. And that, of course, was what was happening to Peter. His understanding of what the kingdom of God was, what it meant to be a follower of Jesus, was expanding. He was growing. God was showing him something new, a new way to embody the kingdom of God. Martin Luther King comes along and he embodies a new vision for what America could be like. A beloved community, a community where there is peace, a community where there is no racial discrimination, and a, a community where there is a common good. And so King comes along and expands our notion of what the American dream is. And of course, we are challenged today to continue on and to say, what does that dream mean for Howland here in 2018? What would the kingdom of God look like if the kingdom were to come in its fullness? What would have to change? What are the things we would envision that dream would be about? That's the challenge for us. And that's where we need to pray to God to give us such a vision. Now, if King's dream were nothing more than a political platform of a talented preacher with extraordinary courage, that's good enough and that's one thing. But that would not necessarily be worth honoring in church. But what if God was inspiring Martin Luther King, just like God inspired Peter? What if King's dream, incomplete as it might be, imperfect as it might be, what if it was inspired by God? What if we need to tap into that inspiration and apply it and expand it to our current situation today. That's why we must, we must wake up. We must be alert. If King's dream is a part of God's dream, then we had better wake up. And it doesn't matter what King left undone or the mistakes he might have made. If that inspiration comes from God, we need to also ask ourselves, how is God inspiring us? How can we live into that dream? And finally, we've got to wake up and dream, or we will never be willing to face the costs of making the dream a reality. And I suspect that's why some people are resistant to King's dream and why some people are resistant to a dream of the kingdom of God is because they recognize it may cost us something. Now, I'm sure Peter, when he had this vision and he started socializing with non-Jews, I can almost guarantee that he lost some friends. Some of his friends might have said, Peter, I love you and I believe in what you're doing, but I just can't go along with that going outside the Jewish tradition and socializing with those that we consider unclean. And so he, it cost Peter something to take this step. And Living out that dream in our society today may cost us. It may cost us some friendships. It may cost us some material things. It may cost us some of our time. But if we are to live out that dream, if we are to be inspired by that dream of a community that truly is under the kingdom of God, in the reign of God, we need to be willing to pay the cost. The costs are great because the rewards are so great. Just imagine living in a world where there is true peace, where Arab and Israeli, Israeli live side by side helping each other, a world where there is no poverty, racism, and war, a world where rich and poor, black and white, can sit down at the table of brotherly and sisterly love. This is the dream that Martin Luther King called us to. This is the dream that God wants all of us to share. There's a, a beatitude that kind of sums up this whole thing, a, 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 an additional beatitude, if you will. And this additional beatitude says, happy are those who dream, 
who dream dreams and are ready to pay the price to make them come true. Let us pray. Loving God, help us this morning to dream those dreams. Give us your dream, your vision for our lives, for our families, and for our churches and for our communities. Show us what that dream might be in our communities this day and show us what part we have to play. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We ask that you stand as you are able for our closing hymn, Many Gifts, One Spirit. And now may the blessings from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit inspire us with a dream of God's community here at Howland Methodist Church, starting this day, starting this week, and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>